has told me the whole story. Lorenzo, do you confess to the murder of Caesar and to framing him for the Phantom Weasel's crimes? Hmm. <laughs> Look who's finally developed a conscience. What kind of disciple murders their own master? I hope it was worth it. Because they'll be hell to pay. <sighs> Looks like it's all over. What should we do next, Lenny? Should we start preparing for your show? Sam, this is wrong. I think. Let's rendezvous with Lynette and Gemma first. With Lorenzo in custody, Gemma will no longer have to fear for her safety. Good point! We should go tell Gemma the good news right away! It'll give her some peace of mind for sure! Ah, you're back. You were so quick. I've only just finished my third dessert. Your third? Lynette, come on, we've talked about this. Everything in moderation. You're not gonna have any room left for dinner now. That's fine. I'll shift to exercise mode and jog off the excess sugar. That's besides the point. <sighs> well, it's done now. But try to eat a more balanced diet in the future. <sighs> point taken. Did everything go okay? Of course! Lorenzo was no match for us. The guards are taking him into custody as we speak. Gosh, that's amazing. I'm sorry, I still didn't know if I could trust you, but now it seems I can. I had my suspicions about Lorenzo, but I... <laughs> it's okay, we understand. He did threaten you. Clemon would find it hard to trust strangers in your position, too. But you don't need to be scared anymore. Everything's gonna be okay. Sorry. Sorry. My emotions are all over the place right now. I've been waiting for this day to come for so long. I always wanted to report Lorenzo. He took all of Caesar's property, which I found suspicious. But I had people watching me all the time, so I couldn't risk looking into it. I was so afraid. I was scared he'd do something terrible to me. And then no one would be left to visit Caesar's grave. So I never had the courage to speak out. Thank you all. Truly. Thank you so much. Oh, the, why did he that, did that announcement? I feel that was some kind of plan for that. Thank you all for clearing Caesar's name. I never would have guessed that Lorenzo was the real Phantom Weasel. He never showed any signs that there were problems between him and Caesar in public. From the outside, it looked like they got along great. Ugh, and to think that Lowlife's been living life to the fullest all this time while Caesar's name was getting dragged through the mud. It's a travesty. At least his soul can finally rest in peace now, thanks to your efforts. <laughs> if, if only I'd realized before it was too late. <laughs> Don't blame yourself, Gemma. This isn't your fault. Yeah, you still have the rest of your life to live. Caesar wouldn't want to see you spending it feeling guilty. Hmm. Cheer up, Gemma. My brother's doing a magic show at the Opera House tomorrow evening. Would you like to come along? It might raise your spirits. This show will be a special one. We're holding it in Caesar's honor. In Caesar's honor? Really? Oh, thank you. I'll be there. Great. We'll see you tomorrow evening. Traveler, Paimon, don't be late. Don't worry, we'll be there. No way are we gonna miss out on a free magic show. Wait. Paimon feels like we're forgetting something. Oh, yeah! Caesar's diary! We never found out if the two kids Caesar taught magic to are Linny and Lynette or not. Uh, Lenny 
changed the topic back in the workshop, so we didn't get a chance to bring it up. Oh, well. Guess we'll just have to ask Linny tomorrow evening. I was about to Not ask you that. Time. My brother's going solo today. So I'll be watching with you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I hope everybody's ready because the show is about to begin. The great magician Linny has prepared a spectacular show for us all tonight, concluding with an all new grand finale that no audience has ever seen before. Thank you all so much for coming. Now, prepare to join me on a journey through the mystical and miraculous. <sighs> Exciting stuff, isn't it? Yes, it's just... It, it reminds me of him. No wonder. Caesar was a famous magician too. So... How did you two first meet, Gemma? Hmm? Well, I was out on the street once, and I saw him performing for little children. Children love magic, because they're willing to believe in things that can't be rationally explained. Caesar had this amazing way of bringing them into a dreamlike world. And somehow, I felt drawn to him too. So... I went up and asked him to do a trick for me. Aww, that sounds so romantic. What trick did he do? It was with a flower. He took it in his hand, snapped his fingers, and it magically appeared on my head. <laughs> I was so happy that day. No one had ever given me a flower before that. Actually, now that you mention it, Linny's done that one before. Is that right? Then I suppose he's a romantic at heart, just like Caesar. So let's treasure the time we have with him. After all, you never know when the people dearest to you might be gone. That's right. It's all over now. Um, Paimon doesn't really know how to comfort you, but at the very least, no one's gonna be intimidating you from now on. You can breathe easy at last, right? Right. Yes, you can breathe easy now, Phantom Weasel. Huh? See? Even Lynette says... Wait, what? Lorenzo escaped? Where is he? Uh, what do you mean, Phantom Weasel? As Linny once said, a performer's job is to commit fully to their role and put on a flawless performance for their audience. But once the bag of tricks is empty and the curtain falls, it's time to end the show. The spotlight is no place for someone with no more cards up their sleeve. It's been ten years, Gemma. Aren't you tired of the grieving widow act? I think it's time to put an end to it. What are you talking about? Uh, Paimon doesn't like this riddle. Traveler, Paimon doesn't like where this is going. Come on, say something! <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're all enjoying the performance so far. There will now be a brief intermission, after which Linny will perform the most electrifying act of tonight's show. The one we've all been waiting for. The final performance will take place outside of the Opera House, so please make your way outside in a calm and orderly fashion. The Phantom Weasel never did like public places, did they? <laughs> Don't worry, this place will be quiet soon. Let's talk somewhere else for now.
Dear me, this is awkward, isn't it? And unfortunately, I'm all out of gadgets, so I'm afraid I can't do any tricks to liven up the mood. This is a big mistake for a magician to make, but thankfully, I do have a backup plan. Now, who wants to hear a story? Uh, Lenny? Don't we have more important things to address right now? Lynette accused Gemma of being the real Phantom Weasel a moment ago. Oh, what the heck's going on? All in good time. Magicians are good at guessing what people are thinking. I know the questions you want to ask. And as it happens, the story I'm about to tell might answer a few of them. Oh, please. Really? Well then, let's hear it! Paimon's dying of curiosity here! Let's go back to the very beginning. A decade ago, when the Phantom Weasel was terrorizing the Court of Fontaine, she never missed a target, never left a trace, and no treasure was safe from her thieving hands. But as her infamy grew, so did the readiness of the police, and her opportunities to act became ever fewer. Every day, she ran the risk of being exposed for who she was. Of course, she could not simply take this lying down, and before long, she found her ticket to freedom. She would create a scapegoat, a false weasel, to close the chapter on her behalf. After weighing her options, she set her sights on a renowned magician, Caesar. After all, magic and theft shared enough similarities for people to buy the story when the truth came out. Wait. She was the one that actually planned his skin. So... so then what? Being the master deceiver she was, the weasel easily earned Caesar's trust. Now all that remained was to frame him for her countless crimes. But as she was considering how to make her move, she noticed Caesar's aggrieved pupil, and a new thought entered her mind. Maybe I don't need to get my hands dirty after all. At her encouragement, Lorenzo tampered with Caesar's magic box, causing him to fall to his death. Afterwards, Lorenzo seized his master's property, and the weasel set about tarnishing Caesar's reputation. Two co-conspirators committed the perfect crime. Okay, this is a plot I said inside. <laughs> I've got to hand it to you. You're both exceptional storytellers. It's enough to make even me wonder whether there was really another mastermind behind all this. Pulling the strings. But I just have one question. You seem to think that I am the villain in this tale. What's brought this on, Linny? Is it something that Lorenzo said? Don't worry, Lorenzo said nothing at all. But I never believed that he was the weasel. And in fact, my investigation only made me more certain of that. He was too forthcoming with his confession, as if there was something else he was trying to hide. How disappointing. So you'd sooner trust Lorenzo than me, even without a shred of evidence? A magician is an expert at playing the audience to get the result they want, and I have no doubt that you, Gemma, are equally talented in this regard. With a little help from Lorenzo, you put on a very convincing performance. The lovesick fiancé, whose devotion to her betrothed is unshakable, even under threats of violence. Caesar was maligned and hated by all for ten years, but you? Everyone sympathized with your plight. Who would suspect for one second that the lovely young lady always seen weeping in front of Caesar's grave was actually the mastermind behind his demise? No, not that poor lady. Uh, perish the thought. Wait, so you mean the whole intimidation thing was just a hoax? Gemma and Lorenzo were both in on it? But why would Lorenzo agree to that? And why didn't he sell her out even at the end instead of admitting to being the weasel himself? Yes, why indeed. Hmm. Maybe Gemma herself could enlighten us on that question. Well, Linny, if you are so confident in your version of events, then I think the answer should be obvious. 
having killed Caesar with his own hands, Lorenzo was plagued by overwhelming guilt. Revealing the Phantom Weasel's true identity would serve no purpose. But if the Weasel remained free, then she could take care of Lorenzo's loved ones. An excellent answer, though sadly a little dull. Is that right? Well, don't let me bore you. If you'd care to change the topic to something more interesting, I'd be much obliged. As a matter of fact, there's one thing I'd really like to understand. Why would the real Weasel have targeted things that only have value to other people? Could you shed any light on that? Of course. After all, we're just telling stories here, aren't we? If I had to guess, I would say that the real Weasel must have had a terrible childhood. Left to fend for herself after her parents died young. Betrayed. Scorned. Beaten. She'd scrounge waste paper from garbage bins to draw on, using twigs and dirt for lack of ink and pen. She'd sew ugly ragdolls from whatever scrap material she could get her hands on. This was her only source of happiness in life. But it was all she needed, and she was content. Until the world decided that even this was too good for her. Once again, she was betrayed. And this time, everything was taken from her. She felt like life was a miry pit that dragged her further down the more she struggled to escape. At that tender age, she should have been happy. Instead, she stood in the shadows and watched with envy as all good things in the world passed her by. This was a fate too cruel for anyone to bear. Her pain became a breeding ground for dark thoughts. Thoughts which festered and grew into a twisted solution to her troubles. I detest the happiness of others, in all its forms alike. I will rob them of everything they hold to be good and true. And it will fill the void in my soul. That's some pretty heavy stuff. <laughs> now it all makes sense. Not quite. Does this story satisfy you, Linny? Yes, it is quite to my tastes. Thank you for helping to clear up my confusion. So she put an act for Taylor Hills. And she did the whole weasel thing. Okay, I'm kind of confused where this is going. Huh. That's right. What drove you to write that letter, Gemma? What were you trying to achieve there? Because without that, none of this would have ever come to light. She didn't write the letter. Huh. <sighs> After ten long years, I'd hoped that the Phantom Weasel would be consigned to the history books by now. But it seems like someone still wasn't ready to let her finally be at peace. Linny. Or should I call you the Phantom Copycat now? You were the one who posted that letter outside the Opera House. But why? Very sharp, Phantom Weasel. Still as shrewd as ever. Well, no need for me to be coy about it. Our goal was to clear Caesar's name. The most straightforward way to change the public's impression of Caesar was to force the weasel to show themselves. Uh, that's it? You had no other agenda? Of course we did. We made it quite clear in the letter, I believe. I shall take from you that which you hold most dear, just as you did to me ten years ago. Ten years ago? You mean Caesar's death? Y you met him? Uh, wait... Oh, I get it. You were those two obnoxious kids! It's been so long, and you're all grown up now. I didn't recognize you. He taught you magic back then, didn't he? For, what, ten days or something? <laughs> And you went to all this trouble. Why? Because you feel like you still owe him something? 
We remember all our debts, however great or small. Ten years ago, Caesar's reputation was torn to shreds and his legacy was thrown out. Ten years on and no one cares what the truth is anymore. But we did not forget. And so we came to find you. And? What exactly did you take from me? I'm still standing, as you can see. Lorenzo has admitted to everything. I'm free. Free? <laughs> Do you really think so? Caesar once told me that even though the world is filled with lies and falsehoods, we must find our own truth. I think that applies to you, too. Truth can take many forms. Prized possessions with nostalgic value, fervent hopes and dreams, and irreplaceable people. Life took many things from you, and those wounds never healed. When they ached unbearably in the dead of night, stealing became your way of numbing the pain. What are you trying to say? I'm saying that for the last ten years, you've been living a rather uneventful life. Perhaps that's because you found something other than a life of crime to fill the hole? Back to Lorenzo for a second. He murdered his own master, played along with your act, and took pains to make sure any suspicion would be directed towards him. But what did he have to gain from all that? He knew who you were and the things you'd done, and despite that, he was willing to give everything up for your sake. He's the reason that you haven't felt the compulsion to steal in all these years. You're more than just accomplices in murder. You're the only real friends each other has. So I think you know, deep down, that he is the only truth you have in your life. But that truth is gone now, and I guarantee you, You'll never see it again. <laughs> Congratulations on your freedom, Gemma. Your freedom will cost you dearly. From now on, you'll be all alone in a world full of lies and falsehoods. I do hope you'll be able to bear it. You've still got a long life ahead of you, after all. Gather round, one and all. The time has now come for the amazing. I almost forgot about that. The final act in tonight's show. I'm sure you're all wondering what he has planned for the grand finale. Well, wonder no more, for the answer is a death-defying high-altitude escape. A high-altitude escape. I'm sure you all remember the magician Caesar. This was the very trick that led to his fatal fall, after which he was dubbed the Phantom Weasel. But we have now learned that Caesar was wrongly accused, and that the real Weasel has now confessed to their crimes. Guess that's my cue to leave. Whew. I've been practicing this one for ages now, but I'm still a little nervous. Traveler, Paimon, I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. There may be a lot of people watching tonight, but you alone are my true witnesses. <laughs> Lenny, wait. You two hid a lot from Caesar. He went to his grave without ever knowing your secrets. So what about now? Are you an open book? Or are you still the same as ever? You don't have to tell lies to end up isolated and alone. One day, you'll end up exactly where I am today. Maybe then you'll finally understand. You're wrong. I'm nothing like you. <laughs> so, uh, what are we, uh, doing now? No idea. Like Lenny said. When you're ready, let's head outside and watch the show. But what about Gemma? She'll figure out what's best for her soon enough. Oh, and if you'd like to see Lenny after the show, you know where he'll be. The usual haunt. Alright, well, let's go and watch Lenny's finale then. 
this trick's a pretty dangerous one, but he should be able to pull it off, right? <sighs> what is my truth? <laughs> Sometimes I think I'm like a gambling addict. <sighs> All I care about is winning. And it doesn't matter what's at stake. By the time I come to my senses, I'm left with nothing. Oh, if I had my time again. Magicians are not like thieves. Thieves only tear things apart. But good-hearted magicians, they put things back together. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, this uh, really live up to the nation. Twist and turns. I bet Fukara is love this. Man. And I think, I don't want to be negative a little, but I feel this bit was legit made just to stretch out just a little more. They could have ended at the Lynette showcase, but they have to pull this now. I'm really curious what's gonna happen to her. I mean, she just gonna go? I really don't like the music here. Like, 